let me start by, of course, uh, recognizing, giving thanks to the CCGI board um, for put, and, and Kamala and team for putting together this phenomenal conference. Uh, good afternoon to my fellow panelists and uh, to the participants in this seminar. Um, you know, Safa, so it's put on a number of areas that I believe are so critical and crucial to appreciating the responsibility of the board and the board leadership through a crisis. And I'll sort of touch on a couple of them as I share some thoughts. But let me begin by positing a position. And that position is the board's first responsibility is business continuity. So profit, increasing shareholder value, employee engagement, customer retention, all of these things that are uh, integral and, and critical to a, a business continuing or for, for us to have a successful business, all these things disappear if there isn't a business at all. Mm -hmm. So during a crisis, you know, CEOs and C-suite executives are typically on the front line, but the board has a very important role in supporting them as they lead the company or they lead their company during and beyond a crisis. You know, importantly, board behavior and its own operation, how the board operates, signals what the C-suite should or should not do. That said, we have to be very careful of blurring of the lines. And, you know, Sephira spoke about this in a very different way, but certainly touched on the same point. Um, that the board has got to resist the temptation of taking over operational responsibility. You know, that fine line of providing support and guidance versus pr provision of instructions on operational matters. Now, certainly the board's legal duties and fiduciary obligations are durable and transcending any specific set of circumstances. And much has been written about how boards should generally behave during a crisis. Uh, but, you know, we're coming to COVID and what we realize is few, if any, in fact, when I look across most of the board leaders I've spoken to, nobody has experienced anything like COVID. Nobody has experienced anything as dire as a pandemic. In fact, irrespective of industry, a crisis of this magnitude acts as a true pressure test uh, for boards. It uncovers new fault lines that it, it essentially and invariably directors must navigate. So directors have needed to, what I've found is that directors have needed to especially display a different level of courage and decisiveness and at the same time, a calming demeanor in engagement of the leadership of the leadership of the organization. Uh, over the past few months, this crisis has caused me to engage with several board leaders, and these board leaders have led a varying array of organizations, large, small, medium-sized, through different crises, and whether that's financial, reputational crises, natural disasters but COVID has been quite unique. And in an ever evolving crisis such as this one, uh, our boards need to be constantly pausing, assessing, reassessing, then they anticipate, they act, and then they reassess once again. But I say that the big three that I've, that's come to my mind that is required of board leadership in this time is an appreciation of leadership style, and Safa, you mentioned the, this point about a, a board hiring leaders, so there's a CEO and a leadership team that looks like them. And there's an appreciation that there needs to be a different type of leadership style at different points. Uh, the planning for ongoing disruptions. So that need to remain flexible in a dispassionate way. Um, so you may need to make a a decision on how to pivot the organization because you're going down a path, your strategic plan says this is what you should do, but you're so bombarded by the re realism of the situation or the things that are taking place that the organization needs to pivot. Almost invariably in many instances, that could mean throwing out your strategic plan and taking a step back. And of course, keeping an eye on the future. So let me touch on each just very briefly. Um, so everyone has a natural or preferred, preferred way of leading. And let me call it your default leadership style. 
the one that in the middle of a crisis you unconsciously tap into. But that is same. That is that is very much true for a board as well. So the way that the board interacts and guides the C-suites will require in times like these for the board to consciously state, take a step step back and consider whether or not a particular style is the right one for the situation that we have at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So you ask yourself the question, what signal does our behavior or approach send to the C-suite or us as, as board members, as a leader, as board leadership? That signal we sent to the C-suite is invariably that signal that is gonna get transcended to the rest of the organization. Mm -hmm. The board, so the board itself is not immune to disruption either. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, invariably the a board now has to plan in these times. They would have had to plan for things like the absence of a quorum, right? So what, how do you make emergency decisions when you don't have a quorum? Right? Either way, the board board's governance committee will play a critical role, but certainly the board members and board leaders have got to start thinking about this is a, a, a place of disruption. How do we as leaders prepare our organization or enable ourselves to make decisions or act. And that so crucial piece, which is around looking to the future. This crisis will pass as all crises do, but when it does the organization, the business must be ready to move forward. And they, in doing that, they must be, we must be learning the lessons that we learn at the height of the crisis. The new skill sets that we identify, the gaps, that we identify in the leadership of the organization are core components of what we must bear in mind, sort of what we must take into consideration. As board leaders, these things need to be on the board's agenda so we can begin to address these once the crisis mitigation steps are in place. So we want those crisis mitigation steps in place. You know, you know, we, we have this thing about you ride the bicycle and whistle, so you have to ride the bicycle and whistle. So you have to be putting these mitigation steps in place whilst at the same time understanding and appreciating uh, what we need to have for the future of the organization. Um, I asked myself a couple of questions. So, and, and this is again about that merging of that, that overlapping responsibility oftentimes, what appears to be an overlapping responsibility between border and management, and that should not exist. So looking at the business from all angles, is that a board responsibility or a management responsibility? Hmm. Yeah, well, that's actually everybody's responsibility. So from sales to supply chain, employee sick leave, what we have found in COVID-19 is that this, it has impacted every aspect of a business operations. So a board must help management to understand, but it should not necessarily be taking the operational decisions on behalf of management. Communication. So there's a broad variety of stakeholder groups with which we need to engage. So again, employees, customers, uh, people in the supply chain. So it, whose responsibility to that is that board or management? So management absolutely owns, ought to own the operational responsibility, but the board does own a particular responsibility about how it communicates to shareholders, how it's communicating to management, and by management ensuring that that kind of communication I mentioned the calming demeanor is flowing down into the organization. Uh, one of the things that we have found with COVID is this recommendation that over communication is important. So, you know, whilst if, when, when you find that every communication leads with coronavirus, it's easy to feel as though you're being overwhelmed, or if you're going to speak about coronavirus as well, that you're contributing to the noise. And company leaders must resist this temptation. Both board and management must resist that temptation. Mm -hmm. It's important to send very clear lines of communication around what the business is doing and what expectations uh, both employees and leadership should have. The responsibility for acting swiftly, effectively, and empathetically. Again, it's a responsibility that both board and management has. Again, board sets the pace and it sets the tone for the organization. And it's the sense of urgency, but also the, the sense of being pragmatic in decision making. As the board feeds that into management, it will be important 
for the leadership of the organization to pick, pick up on that as well. I'm going to close on one point, um, and, and a particular point, and this is the soft stuff. You know, it, it's so important for us to take the time to re breathe and remember as board members, as board leaders, that things get done through people. Mm. So that's soft stuff, stuff. That power of saying thank you, the power of engagement, the power of encouragement, the power of motivation will always be very critical. And certainly we've found it critical in the businesses that have that have we are seen to be most successful through this transition. Those businesses that have the ability to provide that kind of encouragement, keep the soft side of management and leadership and that empathy going to maintain the level of a motivation that's required for executive leadership. So just some thoughts. Uh, hope that that will feed some of the conversation and discussion that we'll have. After.